Hello, my name is Will Carmack, and in today's After Effects tutorial, I'm going to be showing you five video game effects every visual effects artist has to know. From fluctuating health bars that are tracked onto your head, to glowing outlines of an enemy like games like Halo, all the way to interactive blood splatter screens, and much more. This video is going to be a must watch for anybody who wants to make their own video game animation for themselves. And I have to let you know that this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. So the first effect is the fluctuating health bar. For this, we'll need to operate over here in the tracker panel because we wanna track the fluctuating health bar on top of our heads. So we're gonna come over to the right and hit track motion. We're gonna grab our track point and find the point on our head that has the most contrast. And luckily my ear decided to be super pink that day. So I picked this point right here. You would wanna do something similar and I will just analyze forward. But as you can see here, After Effects has done a brilliant job tracking my ear. So we're gonna come up to to layer, new and null object. And in the tracker panel, we'll edit target, select the null, hit okay. And then over here in the tracker panel, hit apply. So now our null is stuck to my head, just like that. We're gonna come up to the rectangle tool. We're gonna make a bar above my head, however big you want it. I think this looks like a really good size. So over in your layer contents panel, you can select the rectangle and down here where it says fill color, we're gonna change it to red. And then in the layers content panel, we're gonna select the rectangle and duplicate it. And now the fill color, we're gonna change it to green. And then on rectangle two, the green one, we are actually going to select the anchor point in the middle. To do that, we're gonna hit Y, click on it, we're gonna drag it all the way to the very end. So it's right on this left edge. And now if you come back to the right and under shape transform, we are gonna unlock the scale. So now it's gonna scale up and down like this. And before we move forward, we can link this to my null object. So we'll grab the parent and link tool of the shape layer and connect it to null 40. So now when we watch that back, my health bar is perfectly tracked to my head. So right after I get hit right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my shape layer and I'm gonna select my top rectangle, the green one here. And over in our shape transform menu, I'm gonna create a keyframe for scale. And over a few seconds, I will then turn the scale lower like this. So now when he hits me, my bar turns red. We can come to effects and presets and we can type in deep glow. We can put deep glow on this shape layer here. We'll turn down the radius and the exposure quite a bit, just so it has a nice subtle glowy feel. And now this looks incredible. He's gonna headbutt me and my glowy health bar is gonna slowly turn red. And of course now if we track my bad guy here, we can now give him his own health bar. So now I gave this guy a health bar as well and it didn't pop up until I hit him. I thought that was a good video game effect. Video game effect number two is the outlines of the enemy, like the glowing red lines in Halo. You know when a bad guy's close to you, you're gonna see them outlined in red. The effect I'm about to show you with find edges gives you all these really stylistic red glowy lines all throughout your character. So in this scene, once I hit him and his health bar comes on, I want the video game to now indicate that he's a bad guy. So to do this, we're gonna come up to our Roto Brush tool. We'll duplicate our original scene and we're gonna mask out the character we wanna add these glowy lines to. So you can see here, I've got a great mask of my character right after I punched him. So for now, we'll isolate our character and we're gonna go to our effects and presets and we're gonna type in the effect find edges. And we'll double click that to put it onto our character. And in our effect controls, we're going to select invert to make it black and white. And this is super important. We're gonna right click on this and we're gonna pre-compose it now. Make sure you move all attributes into the new composition and we're just gonna name this red glow. So now if we unsolo it, you can see we kind of have like this black demon that's in our scene now. But the trick here is we're gonna take this layer and we're going to set it to add. And then in the effect controls panel, we're gonna type in tint. And we're gonna put that on our red glow layer and we're gonna map the whites of this tint, watch this, to red. And if you look, you can really do any color you want, but this is perfect for red to get the bad guy video game look. And you can see that the lines kind of follow all the sharp and contrasty parts of his body. So you get this really stylistic line look. And so now to really make this effect pop is we'll grab our red glow layer and in effects and presets, we'll type in deep glow or whatever glow plugin you have. I'll make sure the radius is really small and then we'll crank the exposure down, keep it juicy and subtle. You can also experiment with with changing it to screen, and then you'd be able to actually make the glow a little brighter while maintaining a little detail. So this is with it, without it. 
with it, without it. Oh, it just looks so good. This is true video game stylizing. And what we'll do is as his health bar grows onto screen, we'll just keyframe the opacity of this red glow, make a keyframe for 100 and drag it over a few frames and then start it at zero. So now we have a perfect indicator telling the audience that this man is in fact a bad guy. Now for effect number three, this one's super easy. This is those moments where you hit or get hurt in a video game and your character like turns red. It's kind of a visual justification for your health bar to then fluctuate down to red. So for example, right here, when my fist goes across his body, I want him to glow red for a moment, indicating that I just hurt him in the video game. And luckily we already masked this dude out because we did the glowing edges effect. So right here, when I hit him, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this masked out layer of him and I'm gonna type in the curves effect. And when I put that on top of this layer, I can change the channel to red, create a keyframe, and then over the frame I hit him, I can turn this red up like this. You can also play around with the white RGB curve to get it kind of contrasty. So this is with the curves effect, this is without it. I want this effect to happen fast. So I'll do like two frames until it's super bright. And then over the next five frames, I'm gonna copy and paste that first keyframe. So over this few seconds, the red Red plops on and then goes off. So right here, when he goes in for the headbutt, I'll grab the curves effect and put that on my mask, create a keyframe for curves, switch it to the red channel. And for like two frames, we are gonna make the animation where I turn my body completely red like this. Again, you can play around with all the curves to make this stylized however you'd like. And then over a few more frames after that, you wanna just hit reset on the curves. When he gets me right here, bam, I flash red for that second. Now with all of these effects combined, we've got this great little action scene where I hit him. You know, he flashes red, he heads butt me. Head butts me. Okay, you guys get the point. The only thing missing from this now is a cool motion graphic. Every great game has cool stylistic banner pop-ups giving you directions or a command to hit. So I'm gonna show you the easiest way to animate those here in After Effects. So I'm gonna come up to the rectangle tool and I'm gonna create a big rectangle at the top of this animation. Something a little bit like this. And I'm gonna change the fill to black. I like that look, it's a good look. And then this is where the magic happens. In effects and presets, we're gonna type in fast box blur. We're gonna put that on our rectangle and on blur dimensions, we're gonna change it to horizontal and watch the edges as we scale up the blur. We get this incredible taper off look. You can't tell me every great video game has banners that look just like like this. And so to give it a good pop and animation, we're actually gonna create a keyframe for the blur radius when it's as blurry as we like it. I'll move that over like a few seconds and then do a keyframe for zero. So you'll see over time the edges get blurry. So we're gonna select our shape layer and go to properties panel on the right. And under shape transform, we're gonna unlink the scale so we can keyframe the scale to have it come onto the screen like this. And so we're gonna match the keyframes of the blur with the scale. So I'll go to the last blur keyframe and I'll create a keyframe for the scale and I'll go back to the first blur keyframe and then keyframe the scale to be zero. So in tandem it scales and gets blurry at the same time. But we're going to right click on these keyframes and easy ease them and in the graph editor it looks nice when it starts slow and gets fast in the middle. So we're going to create this beautiful S curve. So now when I walk up to these guys I get a little banner pop up and to add some good button detail to this we'll just go back up to our shape tool and grab the uh, lips and I'll change the fill to white. So put this in the middle of my banner and then I'll grab the rectangle tool and I'm gonna make the rectangle button from a PlayStation controller. We're gonna change the fill to nothing and then the stroke black with like a stroke width of four. Four looks good. And then to make the button more buttony, we will go to effects and presets and we'll type in bevel alpha. And if we put bevel alpha on our circle, you can see if we crank up the edge thickness, it just makes the button look a little more three-dimensional. And then we'll grab our text tool and we'll type in some kind of command. Since I'm about to punch the guy in the face, I'm going to type the word fight. Actually, I think attack looks cooler and this font is nice. So now we've designed a cool little banner. So we're going to open up opacity on these new layers and I'll create a keyframe right now while they're at 100%. And as the banner is spreading out, I'll just keep it at zero. So you can see here it kind of like fades on 
as the bar fades on. So when I watch that back, we get this great banner giving me the option to attack these guys. And so as we zoom in, we want it to go away. And to justify it disappearing right before I attack them, what we can do to add a cool stylistic look, we can make the anchor point the center of this button. And right before I punch them, we can create a keyframe for scale. And over a few frames, we'll create the scale to go down like this and we'll just copy and paste that first keyframe a few seconds later. So you can see here it looks like the button has been clicked. So I will easy ease these keyframes. So now the banner pops up we click that button and we zoom in. And then when we zoom in right here we'll create a keyframe for opacity of all these new banner layers. And when we zoom in, we're just gonna keyframe it to zero. So in totality, we've got this great scene where a banner gives us the option to attack, and then we do, baby. This just looks so freaking cool. And lastly, to make this as interactive with the screen as possible, I will show you how to do the injury screen overlay that you see in games like Call of Duty when someone's getting shot at, and you get this like bloody red vignette. It just looks so good, and I'll show you the easiest way to do it here in After Effects. So a fun way to do this and keeping it a little PG is you can type in red watercolor on Google. All of these look perfectly like blood. I like this one a lot, so I will save this image. I'll bring this into my composition, and I'll scale it to uh, match the frame here. And I will grab the ellipse tool and I'll create this mask, which I'm then going to subtract to kind of get this little vignette. We're gonna open up the mask here in the layers panel and just crank that feather up. I switched it out for a better uh, watercolor thing. I'll even put Gaussian blur on it so it's not as crisp. We want kind of the blood on there to be a little blurry. And a really nice touch with this, instead of having it on normal, we'll set the blending mode to overlay. If you look at the edges, we get kind of a cool red stylistic look. So what we're gonna do right here when he hits me, we'll create a keyframe for opacity and put it at zero. And as he hits me, we're just gonna keyframe it to go to 100%. So you can see when he hits me, the border is now all red and glowy. And I will actually fade this out really long. So I'll create a keyframe for opacity at zero right here. And you can see I'm letting it fade out for a long time. Because in these video games, sometimes when you get hurt, your health stays low for a little bit and the screen stays red. And so now we have this kind of stylistic vignette. We're actually gonna create a new adjustment layer. We're gonna add the curves effect to that. And when you get damage right here, we'll create a keyframe for curves. And over a couple frames, we're just going to change it to the red channel and crank that red bar up. Actually, we'll keep the red more subtle because we don't want to take too much away from the cool vignette. So now when I get hit, the whole screen turns red and we have this cool kind of bloody border. And like the bloody border over like a length of a few seconds, we're gonna hit reset on curves so the screen slowly goes back to its normal color. And so now you can see this hit is way more impactful. So those are five video game effects that you must know as a visual effects artist. You can see here, I've created an entire video game with just five tricks. I hope everyone feels inspired to make their own video now. You can check out the final animation I did with this effect on my Instagram. It is so freaking good. And now it's time to thank my incredible sponsor, Squarespace. I have to introduce to you Squarespace's design intelligence. You might not know this about me, but I have the biggest collection of vintage life magazines in the world, and I want to create a site showing off this American history in a really pretty way. And so with Squarespace's design intelligence, I can create a website that looks perfect and vibey. So with these vintage magazines, maybe some cool vintage looking shapes to show off some covers, a nice color scheme that really matches the dark tones of these magazines. And if I need some assistance, they have award-winning templates. So I actually have a lot of duplicates of these vintage magazines and I wanna sell them as collector's items to other people. And what's amazing about that is Squarespace has online stores you can create. So if you have products, whether that's jewelry, plants, vintage magazines, you can create a beautiful online store with Squarespace. And even better, Squarespace Payments is endless. They have all the popular payment methods like Klarna and Afterpay, all the buy now, pay later options. And if you don't think Squarespace is incredible yet, well, how about the fact that they gave me a code to give you for 10% off your first website or domain. So go get a discount on creating a website that will bolster your image as a professional. Really anybody can benefit from having an amazing website. So build it with Squarespace. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day.